you're welcome to Terrific Tools for Stress and Anxiety of COVID-19. I'm your host, Daniel Levy, the Clinical Director of the Integrative Counseling Center and creator of the Good Mood Coach Project. It used to be the Good Mood Coach, and now we have a team of Good Mood Coach folks. Now, we're going to talk today about a horrible illness that's almost as bad as COVID-19 spreading around every city in the United States. In fact, if I were you, I might consider quarantine against this. This is a case of the what ifs. Now, in the case of the what ifs, it's really bad because once a what if gets into your mind, a case of the what ifs even worse than a case of the shoulds or a case of the if onlys. But luckily today, we came prepared. I got my Nerf gun because I have a contingency plan. Now today, the contingency plan tool is our first of three tools for overcoming the what ifs. The what ifer is a very strong enemy to a good mood. Now, if you have any anxiety, if you have any panic, PTSD type trauma reactivity or fears about the future, then you know 100% about the what ifs. The what ifs work like this. All right, you just gotta switch gears. That was just to entertain you, hopefully. <laughs> Maybe it was stupid, but uh, hey, here we are. So the what ifs, we have three tools, the contingency tool, the so what tool, and the 90%, 95% rule. In episode one, we're gonna be just reviewing the contingency tool. Now, one of my spiritual folks that I follow, whose name Rabbi Shlomo Eliezer Shik, the Moharaj Zegert Tzadik of Rocha, he, he was a mystic and he died about five years ago. He left this world. He taught amazing things from his teachers and his teachers from the mystic Rebbe Nachman, and one of the things is he says that people have a bad day and don't enjoy their life because they are lost in worries about the future or carrying around burdens of the past. Now, I think that's familiar to all of us. Now, why is this so bad? Let's think about it a little before we get into how to deal with it. What are the what ifs and how does anxiety work? In cognitive therapy, and I'd like to give a shout out to Jeff Riggenbach, my uh, trainer and teacher in that, and a few others, and to other rabbis and spiritual teachers who've taught me these ideas. Um, what ifs? What is anxiety of this kind? Anxiety. Anxiety of this kind is when we fast forward a movie into the future and I'm experiencing like my projection of the movie of what I think will be in this present moment. It's already hard enough with Corona. It's already hard enough with the social distancing and the loss of work and all the pressure and all the stress. And now I got something else. That was already 55 pounds of weight. And now I got another 200 because I'm experiencing what I think will happen in the future down a certain road. And I'm thinking that that probability is probably what's gonna happen. Now in cognitive therapy, we call this forecasting or fortune telling. And that's when I read the future. And the truth is, I believe, and many of us believe, that we don't know the future. In fact, if there's anything that proves we don't know the future, COVID-19. COVID Who thought last August that you'd be sitting here right now watching this in whatever scenario you're in? Nobody. So all the worries from July, August of 2019, all the way to February, complete waste of time. Complete waste of time. Just stop and take that in. This is really important if you want to have the motivation to kill the what ifs. So think about it. Worry is a waste of time. And you say, I know, I want to get out of it. I understand. But first we have to understand because our mind hooks us because we believe that there's significance and this worry matters. We're going to talk about usefulness throughout this course. We're pragmatists and we want things that work no matter what our beliefs are. What ifing never works. Never. Never ever. Oh, one exception. Now there is uh, there are lawyers who are specialists in risk management and risk assessment. 
Now this is the only possible good use of this brain ability that I have found in these last years of doing work with anxiety and panic, phobia, OCD, depression. What does that mean? A corporate team or a husband and wife sit down and assess what are the risks and possible negative outcomes that, are, that, that could occur in the particular path that I'm on. What about life insurance? What about our will? What about our house? What about our kids? And a corporation, where's the cash flow gonna come from? What if we get bought out and so on and so forth? Now that is an absolute good use of this quality, but I think outside of that, nothing else. If you disagree, send me a post, send me an email. I'd love to hear your thoughts. It's always good to grow. So I want you to realize from the very beginning that the what ifs are a bad mental dis-ease and there is no use. And when your mind's gonna harass you, the first thing you should need to know is this is going to be a pointless ride. And all it's gonna do is exhaust you, steal the joy and beauty and blessing of the present moment, which is what the Maharash Rebbe Shik is teaching us. That outside of this present moment is ruined by the what ifs. So if I wanna have a good mood and a good day and less stress, I am going to need to overcome the what if villain. Now magnification, magnification is a distortion reality filter that we often use in our mind. And that means that we take a worry that might have a 10% chance and we experience it like a 90% chance. And that's a little bit what the what ifs are all about. There is a subcategory of magnification called catastrophic worry or catastrophizing I like the other one from, I think it was Ellis, awfulizing. My mind is awfulizing again, honey. So essentially what our brains are doing is setting off an alarm. Oh no, there's a fire alarm going off. I might get COVID and die. What if I do? I might lose my job. What if I might not be able to take care of my children? What if? Um, I might not be able to stay in this country. And it drives us crazy. What if, 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 what if. So there's a couple features here. Number one, the strength of the what if is it's highly scary. And I don't know what I'm gonna do because it seems horrible and overwhelming. Two, it seems highly significant in my life. And three, it seems very probable. So these three episodes, in episode one, we're gonna deal with the helpless, powerless part the contingency tool. In episode two, we're gonna deal with the significance, with the so what tool. And in episode three, we're gonna deal with the probability factor with the 95% rule. And if you stick around through the series, we have an extra one, an extra little tool at the end in bonus number two. Let's get started on the details of the contingency plan tool. At the end of the day, no matter what the fear and how irrational it is, if we can face the fear with courage and feel that we can handle, even if it's difficult, the fear itself, checkmate, the game is over. And the what ifer, this villain that steals our joy, is gone. He's done. There is no more power to him. For example, what if I lose my job while I'm on furlough? And what if that means I have to go on unemployment? And what if my unemployment runs out and I can't get a job? And what if I am forced to get a job at a grocery store like Trader Joe's? And what if I feel ashamed? And what if I'm just having such a bad life? So what's the worst case scenario? This guy's gonna feel a lot of shame, a lot of difficulty. So, if you can face that and say, you know what, it's okay. At least I'll have a job. I'll get over the shame. I'm a good guy for working. And he can face that, then done. He no longer has to worry about the what if. So we're gonna call this a contingency plan. And it could be emotional or it could be financial or physical. What we need to understand is that courage is the opposite of fear and anxiety, courage. 
And courage is going forwards into something with confidence, even when I'm afraid. Like the great heroes, and like I love Strider from Lord of the Rings, or you know, Anakin and, and Obi Wan Kenobi and Star Wars. They go Yoda, you know, right in. And they're afraid until you get into it. So too, we need a contingency plan. Anxiety is strengthened by avoidance. So the more we avoid dealing with this, the worse it's going to get. So I think you see where we're going. Let's try out a few cases. What if I catch Corona? And what if it's not asymptomatic? And what if I'm the one exception who gets sick? And what if I'm in the hospital? And what if I need a respirator? And what if I make it, but I'm really sick for a bunch of months? And what if I then takes me a long time to recover? You know what? These what ifs have a little place of risk management that is important, as we mentioned earlier. We gotta face these questions. These are real. It's not just a game. COVID-19 is dangerous. So this what if I can take 10 minutes and really think about what if all of this happened? What would I do? How would I handle it? What would I do about work? What would I do about my family? What doctors would I choose? So it actually would really pay to write all that down. Have a plan, a contingency plan A, a contingency plan B. So if you can answer all the questions of the what if, then you are done. Done, done, done. Looking into the sun. Dun, dun, dun. All right, you gotta have joy when you're recovering. Otherwise, more misery only added to more misery does not help the problem. So, we're saying the contingency tool means that we have to face the thing and answer the question. And once that's answered, then we know a thousand percent there's no purpose. So maybe it is a good idea. We need to answer the question, what doctor would I use? What hospital will my insurance cover? What will I do with the kids? any of these questions, we need to have a plan. Plan B, what if the grandparents aren't available to help? Where will we get babysitters? How will we afford them? It's good to take an hour and sit down by yourself or with your spouse or whoever and plan it out. Same thing, what if I lose my job because I, the corporation lays me off? Good excuse. <laughs> been, hear, been hearing that excuse from corporate clients to say, you know what? These, they were looking to downsize at that big corporation. So they just took advantage of the furlough and now psh, I'm out. Now what am I gonna do? Well, it's a good question. We have to support ourselves. The economy is being tanked by the approach that we're using here. Things are getting worse and stressful, and that's okay. That doesn't mean I can't have a good day today. It's very impressive if you look at some of the folks in this country who struggle with like very low funds and, and low poverty levels, some of them really still have a good day. And we have a lot to learn from how they handle stress and difficulty. So. In the same way, we can have a good day if we can kill these what ifs and, and the fears and go with courage and our head up every day. Find a new way to break on through the anxiety and say, what if this not my friend? I'm gonna keep pounding with the tools till the end. I don't know, don't, 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 don't. So, so what if? What if I don't have a job? What if I lose my insurance? What if I can't pay for the bills? What if? We have to move. What if I have to mortgage my house or foreclose? How will I handle that? Any contingency plan A, B, C, D. So the tool you're going to work on, you are going to pick one difficulty, one what if that really bothers you. You know, pick one. And it could even be what if I'm stuck at home and I never can get away from the stress of my children. And then what if I get stressed out? And what if I have panic attacks? And what if I need to go on medicine? And then I'll... I'll, I'll damage my health and then I'll have other problems with my autoimmune condition. Okay, so pick that. Pick one what if and then write it down in your workbook companion and start doing contingency plans. Do it alone, do it with a friend, do it with your accountant and really come up with it, okay? Face it, these are real questions, these are real situations. It's nothing to run from. We need to do the right thing and this is part of it. And then after this, once we've done the right thing, we've done the risk management, we've planned correctly for our lives and the possible circumstances, it's time to kill the power of the what if. And that's what we're gonna do in the next episode. Stay tuned, put on your seatbelts, go do the workbook thing. And in the next episode of the So What, we're gonna work on killing the significance of these strong and powerful thoughts. I hope this helped you with the case of the what if, and I wish you a beautiful afternoon. 
thank you for the opportunity to share these tools with you.